This is the ICSC board paper of physics of 2024 which was held on 4th March. The paper was a little tricky in certain parts and lots of students were wondering whether what they wrote was correct or no. So here is the solution. You have section A of which you are going to have MCQs and two more questions. It will be comprising of 40 marks and in section B you will have again 40 marks. That means you will have to attempt four questions out of six questions. Now when you get the paper, remember anytime you have to read your section B first. Decide upon the four questions that have to be written very carefully and once you have done that come to section A and start attacking the paper. Think about the various options you will have from the MCQs correctly, wisely. So let us begin solving this paper. In this video, we will be solving section B of this. The MCQs and question 2 and 3 have already been posted on YouTube. So the links will be here somewhere on the right hand side. So do look at them and then come back to this that is section B. In this section, we solve any four questions out of six questions. So let's begin. So let us come to question number four. The image of a candle flame placed at a distance of 36 centimeters from the spherical lens is formed on the screen placed at a distance of 72 centimeter from the lens. Calculate the focal length. Now this is your object distance because the candle becomes the object. Now remember your object distance is going to be on the left side of the lens and the ray will come from left to right but we are looking at the opposite direction so it will have negative sign convention wise it will become minus 36 centimeters and the image is going to be on the other side it is going to be 72 centimeters on the positive side so it's going to be positive 72 centimeter and we have to find the focal length so we are going to use the formula 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u okay so that will give us 1 upon v means 1 upon 72 minus 1 upon minus 36 that will give us 1 upon 72 plus 1 upon 36. The LCM being 72, we will have 1 here and 2. So that will give us 3 upon 72, which is 1 upon 24. So you will have focal length equal to plus 24 centimeter since it is a spherical lens and it is going to be convex lens. Why is it going to be a convex lens? Is it because the image at the screen? Yes. On the screen means it is the real image. We cannot say concave lens because concave lens gives always a virtual image and convex gives real as well as, well as virtual. Okay, so that is how we solve this question. Let's go to the next one. Question for second part. Below is an incomplete table showing the arrangement of electromagnetic spectrum in increasing order of their wavelength. Complete the table. And they are starting with gamma, then X, UV, visible infrared. So this will be micro. So let's look at our questions. Identify the radiation A and that will be microwave. B says, name the radiation that is used to detect fractures in bones. That will be this. So we will write X-ray. Name one property that is common to both A and radio waves. Now, both of them are electromagnetic in nature. So you will say both are electromagnetic in nature.
now it is saying electromagnetic spectrum so probably the examiner will say electromagnetic in nature i will not accept so is there another property that both of them share yes microwave and radio waves they both have long wavelengths that means they can be used for communication so you will say both mark this as bullet one and you will say both are used in radar okay for this let us come to the third one third part a why do we use red color as a danger signal on top of a skyscraper now here the answer will be red color longest wavelength therefore least scattered since intensity of scattering is inversely proportional to lambda to the power 4 therefore can be seen from longer distances now on top of the skyscraper means for the aircrafts so can be seen from longer distances by aircrafts which prevents collision against it B part the diagram shows the path of blue ray through the prism let us look at the diagram there is a prism here the blue ray goes this way and it is going along the surface of separation of air and glass which means it is incident at critical angle so your thinking process is if we draw this normal then this much is 90 degrees and this part is going to be the critical angle and the critical angle is going to be 90 subtracted from 133 and so that is going to be here 133 minus 90 which is going to be 43 degrees calculate the critical angle of the material of the prism for blue color so here you are going to say that critical angle will be equal to 133 degrees minus 90 degrees which is 43 degrees what is the measure of the angle of this prism the angle of the prism is here if this is 43 degrees how much will be uh, this angle now this angle is going to be 90 minus 43 which is 47 degrees okay so this angle is going to be 90 degrees minus 47 degrees so this will be 43 degrees okay so whichever is this angle will be this angle because this plus this is 90 and this plus this also is 90 so we say 43 degrees here which color should replace blue ray for the ray to undergo total internal reflection now if it has to have total internal reflection it has to go this way which means the angle over here should be less than 43 degrees for that color okay so for that let us see if we write the colors of the white light lambda increases this way and so the critical angle that is ic that is also going to increase okay so you will see for red it it's going to be maximum critical angle and for violet it will be minimum critical angle blue color has 43 degrees as the critical angle so critical angle for R will be more than 43 
and the critical angle for violet is going to be less than 43 degrees. Now, if you want total internal reflection, I want a color which will have lesser critical angle, which means my critical angle for violet or indigo will be less than 43 degrees. So I am going to say which color could replace blue color. So I will say violet or I can say indigo and I will say since they have less wavelength, I'm just going to use the letter lambda and critical angle less than 43 degrees. Okay, so they will exceed if it is let us say for argument's sake 42 degrees, then your angle of incidence that is 43 degrees is going to be greater than the critical angle. Okay, because the wavelength is less than 43, 43 will be the greater angle of incidence for that value of critical angle and therefore total internal reflection will take place. Alright, so now here even if you do not show the calculations, ideally I presume you will draw this diagram and show at least this. Okay, so although the working is not required, you could write that. They say calculate for this. This also you will show like this. You can name this point as D and you can say angle D E C is 135. Okay, and that will be 90 plus 43. Yeah, 133. You can call this angle as F and you can show the steps of calculations because this is a four mark question. This will be for one mark and this will be one mark each. All right. So that finishes our question four. Question five, the first part. A, refractive index of glass with respect to water is nine upon eight. Now refractive index of glass, which means it is W mu G. Okay. So it is refractive index of glass with respect to water. That is nine upon eight. Find the refractive index of water that means they are saying refractive index of water with respect to glass means going from glass to water. Now this is equal to 1 upon W mu G. That is going to be reciprocal of this means 8 upon 9. Now they are asking you find the refractive index of water. Now many of you will stop here but remember in physics you have to give your answer in decimal. So zero point you will have nine eight seventy two remain eight nine eight seventy two and is going to repeat that eight so it's going to be this okay. So if you have not written in decimals chances are you will lose your mark. Be very careful. Yeah. Now, name the principle used to find this value. It is the principle of reversibility. Which means that it retraces its own path. And that will give us A mu B into B mu A is equal to 1. C. If we change the temperature of water, then will the ratio 9 upon 8 remain the same? Now, 9 upon 8 is where I am having W mu G and that is 9 upon 8. Now, we are having the heating of water, let us say, that means the density of water 
is going to become lesser. Okay, so if the density or the optical density becomes less, then when it enters the glass, it is going to change the path. Let us see. If we are going to have water here and glass here. So let us say the ray of light is going this way from water into glass. Now, normal refractive index of water is 1.33 and normal glass will have 1.5 as the refractive index. So, instead of going undeviated, it is going to bend like so. Okay, but now if I, let us say, increase the temperature of water, let us say this has become 1.33 but 1.3. So compared to 1.3, 1.5 is more dense. For 1.33, it was less dense. So with this, when it is more dense, it will get refracted more. Okay. So they could also ask what will happen to the lateral displacement. If earlier it was this much lateral displacement, now it will be this much. Okay, so if we change the temperature, what will you say? Does the ratio 9.8 remain the same? You will say no. Now they are asking you only to say yes or no. So we will write it this way. Okay, now we come to second part. Light travels a distance of 10x units in time t1 in vacuum. And it travels a distance of x units in a time t2 in a denser medium. Using this information, answer the question that follows. Light covers a distance of 20x units in time t1 in a diamond. Is it true or false? Now, if the speed of light is going to be 10x units in t1 time. That means if it is traveling in a diamond in a t1 time, then the speed in diamond should be less than 10x because diamond is having the maximum refractive index 2.4. So it is the densest optical medium. Yeah. So it should have the least velocity. Yes. So it should travel least distance. What have they written? They have written that light travels 10x units in T1, but in diamond, it travels double the distance. Can it happen? It will be false. And what you'll say? It should travel. It should cover as they have said, it should cover less than 10x units. It cannot be more than 10x units. Okay. Calculate the refractive index of the medium in terms of T1 and T2. Now, refractive index of a medium is C upon the velocity in that medium. Now, the velocity of light in vacuum is 10x distance upon T1. So, I will say 10x upon T1. And in the medium, it is x units in T2 time. That will be the velocity in the medium. Now, if you rearrange the terms 10x upon T1, multiplied by T2 upon X will give us 10 T2 upon T1. So if we have to find the refractive index of the medium, it will be 10 T2 upon T1. This was a good question. Made the children think quite a lot. They must have spend quite a bit of time on this.
let us look at the third sub part a monochromatic ray of light is incident on an equilateral prism placed at a minimum deviation position with the angle of incidence 45 as shown in the diagram copy the diagram and complete the path of ray pq now at minimum deviation you will need to show the original path of the incident ray it is going to get refracted in such a way that the refracted ray is going to get parallel to the base at this point if we draw this then we will have the ray getting refracted towards the base and it will appear to be coming from here so this angle is going to be delta minimum now although they have not mentioned that mark the minimum deviation uh, as the angle you will show it because it is a minimum deviation position it's wiser to write this including the rays produced this way and this way we will have this as the angle of emergence which you will show as angle e or you can even call this as angle i or i1 and this you can call as i2 now at minimum deviation since we have been given the measure of this angle as 45 degrees i will be equal to e that is this angle also will be 45 degrees state two factors on which the angle of deviation depends angle of deviation depends on number one angle of prism and then say it increases with increase in the angle of prism and number two you can write color second point color or wavelength Second point, color or wavelength, it decreases with increase in wavelength that is inversely proportional, which means the deviation for violet color will be greater than deviation for red because the lambda that is the wavelength for violet is less than wavelength for red. Question 4, the first subpart, define the center of gravity. So you know the definition. So we write the definition of center of gravity. It is the point about which the algebraic sum of moments of weights of all particles of the body is zero. Then we come to B. A hollow ice cream cone has height 6 centimeters. Where is the position of the center of gravity from the broad base? This is not too clear. So it is a hollow cone. And the position of the center of gravity here is going to be h upon 3 from the base which means 6 upon 3 that means 2 centimeters above the base okay now will the position change if it is filled completely with honey now honey is a viscous fluid which means it is no longer hollow but it is going to be solid cone not really solid in the sense that solid metal but yet it will not be hollow so if it was the solid cone it would have been having the center of gravity at h upon 4 that means 6 upon 4 which means 1.5 centimeter above the base which means the center of gravity the position will change now they're saying just write yes or no so you will say yes we come to the second subpart, two identical marbles A and B, you can see them here, are rolled down from path 1, that is this, and path 2, this. Path 1 is frictionless and path 2, this is rough. Which marble will surely reach the next peak? Now remember, 
when it is rough part of the energy is going to get converted into kinetic energy from your potential energy into kinetic energy but part of the energy is going to get utilized in overcoming the friction which means this will reach the next peak maybe not so exactly here but here because it is frictionless there is no loss of energy and so potential energy into kinetic energy kinetic energy into this potential energy so which marble will surely reach the next peak is a along which path the mechanical energy will be conserved now mechanical energy that means potential energy will be equal to kinetic energy that will happen in case a now in this B case, the potential energy will get converted into kinetic energy plus some heat energy and plus some sound energy, which means mechanical energy wise, your potential energy is not going to be equal to kinetic energy. Your potential energy in this case will be greater than kinetic energy. Okay, so this is not going to reach the exact peak. It will be at a lower height. The next peak will come. Along which path or paths is the law of conservation of energy obeyed? Now, conservation of energy means every form of energy. So, in path A, potential energy gets get equal to kinetic energy and kinetic into potential energy. But in B, the potential energy is getting converted into kinetic energy plus heat and sound and the same happens here. Kinetic energy becomes equal to potential energy plus heat and sound. So, it will be a and B. In both cases it will be possible. Now we come to the third sub part. There are two pulleys given here. Copy and complete the label diagram connecting the two pulleys with a tackle to obtain velocity ratio equal to 2. Now you can see there are two pulleys. When you copy make sure that you are drawing this. Okay, This is the rigid support. It's important to mention this. Velocity ratio 2 will be possible if the effort is in vertically downward direction. Okay, so this is how the diagram will be. We will show the effort vertically downwards and then we will have the tackle attached to this and that's how you will have the load which is supported over two strings which means Vr is equal to number of pulleys equal to number of strands equal to 2. So this is how we show vertically downwards effort to give you velocity ratio equal to 2. Now in this diagram if the load is 48 kgf and the efficiency is 80% then you will have efficiency is equal to ma upon vr and so 80% means 80 upon 100 which is the efficiency is equal to ma upon vr which is 2. And that will give us MA equal to, this comes here, 16 upon 10 means 1.6. Now we say MA is equal to load upon effort. So 1.6 is equal to load is 48 kgf and that upon effort. And so effort will be equal to 48 kgf upon I'll write here 16 and I'll write 10 here now 16 goes three times here so that will give us 30 kgf and that is the value of our effort you write like this no chance anyone can cut your marks we finish with question 6 now we come to question number 7, first part A, name the waves used in sonar that is sound navigation and ranging and the answer is ultrasonic waves and you know about it, right? That's all they are asking and the answer is ultrasonic waves and you know that, it's a very simple straightforward question. In the above diagram, Lata stands between two cliffs and claps her hands. Determine the time taken by her to hear the first echo. Now, 
the first echo this is going to be the distance under consideration that will be 170 minus 160 now that is equal to 10 meter now the problem is you will think that this is closest but 10 meter is less than 17 meter so she is not going to hear the echo because of this she will hear the echo because of this cliff B okay so you will say that echo heard from cliff B all right which means I will have distance equal to 160 meter and the velocity of sound is given here 320 meter per second and so we will use the formula for echo which says v is equal to 2d upon t the sound will go this way and this way so we will have two distance that is 160 upon t and that's equal to 320 so t is equal to 2 into 160 upon 320 16 ones and 16 twos and the time will be one second so the time taken to hear the first echo you will write this from here up to here and say that time is equal to one second put this in a box and that is our answer the second sub part a complete the following radioactive reactions so we have x which gives y plus alpha particle which means if this is a this will become a minus 4 if this is z this will be z minus 2 and then this y nucleus is becoming z and you are given the mass number and the atomic number but then they are telling you that y is becoming z after the emission of beta particle so we'll consider this as a this is z and let us see what happens to the nucleus of y after emission of alpha particle y will have a minus 4 particles z will become z minus 2 particles inside the nucleus yes now when y is becoming z it has emitted beta particle so this mass number and this mass number will remain the same and z minus 1 becomes z minus 1 plus 1 which means it is z minus 1 so z minus 1 is 91 so we wrote like so and 234 is a minus 4 so we write like so so that gives us a as 238 and z is equal to 92 now using a and z we need to write this so we are going to have 238 and 92 we write 238 here 92 here this becomes 234 and 90 here and that becomes 234 and 91 here and that is how you'll get your marks for this a part uranium is available in two forms uranium 235 and uranium 238 which of the two isotopes of uranium is more fissionable? Now, both of them are fissionable. But easily fissionable is uranium-235 because fission takes place because of the slow-moving neutron being taken by the nucleus of this uranium atom. Whereas this takes fast-moving neutron and then it gives fission reaction. The third sub part has this diagram. And in this diagram, there is a vibrating tuning fork. It is kept in the mouth of the burette. So this is the burette. It is filled with water. So this is the water. The length of the air column is adjusted by opening the tap of the burette. So this is the tap of the burette and the water is coming down from here so we adjust this length by removing the water from here so that with this vibrating tuning fork a loud sound is heard now this loud sound is at length from here to here being five centimeters 
Why is the loud sound heard? Because of the frequency of this air column will become equal to the frequency of the tuning fork. So let us look at the questions based on that. Name the phenomenon illustrated by the above experiment. The phenomenon is resonance. Why is the loud sound heard at this particular length? I shall write the answer here. So we write this is so as the frequency of the vibrating tuning fork that is the external periodic force equals the natural frequency of vibration of the air column of height how much 5 centimeters. Hence the air column begins to vibrate with larger amplitude and producing louder sound due to resonance. Now if the present tuning fork is replaced with a tuning fork of higher frequency, should the length of the air column increase or decrease to produce loud sound? The fork is going to have a higher frequency, correct? Which means the air column which is of 5 cm, this is going to have low frequency. So therefore 5 cm height column is going to have less frequency than this. So to increase the frequency of the air column, remember frequency is inversely proportional to the length of the air column. And because of that, I will have to decrease the length. So I will have to add some water here so that my height becomes lesser. So we write the length of the air column should be decreased so that its frequency increases and it will equal the frequency of the new tuning fork which is of higher frequency. Question number 8, first part. The voltage current reading of a certain material are shown in the table given below. The voltage is given 10, 20, 30 volt and the current is 2, 3 and 4 ampere. State whether the conductor is ohmic or non-ohmic. Now in order to know whether it is ohmic or non-ohmic, we have to check whether V is proportional to I. Okay, which means V upon I should be constant. So we are going to take the value of resistance in each case. So if we talk about case 1, then it will be 10 volt upon 2 that will give us 5 ohm. In the second case, the resistance R2, we have to check whether it is 5. Now it is 20 upon 3, which is 6.67 ohm and our R3 is 30 upon 4 which is 15 upon 2, which is 7.5 ohm, which means the resistance is not constant, which means it is a non-ohmic. So we will write over there non-ohmic. Justify your answer. We will say after we write this, we will say since resistance is not constant as it does not obey Ohm's law. Then they ask you state Ohm's law. This is a direct question. Everybody should know Ohm's law by heart and that should give you your one mark. The second subpart below given is the diagram of a transformer. Identify the type of transformer. In the primary cell there are more number of turns, secondary cell less number of turns. So so it's a step down transformer. In this type of transformer, which wire is thicker, primary or secondary? Now for that, you will see that in this, there is less EMF, so current is going to be more. And so in the secondary, so you will say in the secondary. And the reason for that is, so we write secondary coil is thicker as it has more current flowing through it. Hence, to reduce the energy loss in the form of heat, Thick wire with more area of cross section offers less resistance for the current to flow, power remaining constant. The third subpart gives us a circuit diagram like so. Calculate the total resistance in the circuit. Now can you see over here 10 ohm and 6 ohm. 
they are in series. So we will call this as our S1. Draw the diagram so that it's clearer for the examiner will be equal to 10 plus 6 that is 16 ohm and then if you do not even write this statement and draw the diagram and show this and call this as RS2 immediately you can even write RS2 your examiner will never cut your marks okay now the current flows through the circuit like so and it is going into two branches so this branch and this branch they are going to give you the total resistance in parallel so you can either write rs1 rs2 are in parallel or you just show the diagram and say 1 upon rp is equal to 1 upon rs1 plus 1 upon rs2 which is equal to 1 upon 16 plus 1 upon 16 which is 2 upon 16 which is equal to 1 upon 8 and therefore rp is equal to 8 ohms the total resistance of the circuit therefore is 8 ohms okay we just write therefore total resistance and just write the answer statements okay so this is your answer a calculate the current drawn from the cell now for the current you know that v is equal to ir so i is going to be equal to v upon r what is this the total voltage offered here 4 volts how much is the total resistance here 8 ohm and then you will have 4 ones and 4 twos which is half means 0.5 ampere this is the current in the circuit state whether the current through 10 ohm resistance is greater than less than or equal to the current through 12 ohm resistor now here it's slightly tricky for you now remember the total equivalent of this is 16 ohm and this is also 16 ohm so the current in the circuit is 0.5 ampere and that i is going to be split into i1 and i2 now this is one path so whether it is 10 ohm or 6 ohm i1 will be the current through this and here whether it is 12 ohm resistor or 4 ohm because it's one path it is going to have i2 as the current through each one of them so i1 and i2 they are going to be equal why because in this branch the total equivalent resistance is 16 and here also it is going to be 16. So both of these branches will have half of this that is 0.25 and 0.25 these are going to be the values of I1 and I2. So when they say that state whether it's going to be greater than less than or equal to you will say that they are equal okay and if you wish to you can write one more statement you can write below this i1 equal to i2 of course you have to show this in your diagram i1 and i2 equal to half of the total current that will be half into 0.5 and that is equal to 0 0.25 ampere so each one of them will have the same current. All right. This was a little tricky one, but it's all right. I think section B is relatively easier. Don't you think so? Now we come to the last question. The first part says 85 grams of water at 30 degrees C is cooled to 5 degrees C by adding certain mass of ice. Find the mass of ice required and all this has been given to you and we are going to use so we make the columns like this we write the quantities water ice 85 degree uh, 85 grams here 4.2 joule per gram per degree c at 30 degree c initial temperature final temperature 5 degrees so delta t is 25 degrees now here do not write anything because ice is going to melt first so we show the schematic diagram here 
I said zero becomes what at zero becomes what at five degree C. You are with me? Now this is change in the phase. So this will use the latent heat of fusion. So we write by principle of calorimetry at equilibrium, heat gained by the ice will be heat lost by the water. That means heat gained by ice will be this, which will be mass into latent heat of fusion, uh, fusion plus Q2, which is mc delta t because it is change in temperature will be equal to heat loss by water will be equal to m1 c1 delta t1 now since we have to find the mass we will take out mass common latent heat of fusion plus c delta t is equal to m1 is the mass of water which is 85 gram multiplied by SHC that is 4.2 I am writing like so into delta T which is 25. Now out here 5 5's 25, 5 2's and 2 1's and 2 21's. So you are now going to have I will just continue this side M into bracket LF is 336 that is specific latent heat of fusion of ice plus here in case of water your SHC is 4.2 so C what we wrote here is the SHC of water and delta T is from 0 to 5 for water so that is into 5 and that is equal to I have 85 into I am writing 105, 21 fives because I don't have much space here. Now M will be here equal to 336 plus this will be 5 ones, 5 twos, 2 ones and 2 20 ones. So this will be like so equal to 85 into 105. So M will be equal to, I think I am going to do this mentally, 357. I am going to bring this here, 357. And I am going to keep this 85 as it is. And this 105, I will keep as it is. Now, I know that this is 7 times multiple. So, 7, 5, uh, 35. And 7, 1, 7. And here, 7, 1's 7 and 7 5's 35 okay now I know that these two are 3 times multiple 3 5's 15 and 3 1's 3 and 3 7's and I know now 17 1's and 17 5's 85 so mass of the ice is going to be 5 into 5 that is 25 grams okay and that is our answer be very careful whenever there is ice added there is change of state children get tricked by this part okay so this is the important step take care so nine second part a why does it become pleasantly warm when the lakes start freezing so this is a give reason I will show you how to write this. B. Water freezes to form ice. What change would you expect in the average kinetic energy of the molecules? Now when the water freezes, we will have no change in its temperature. And the average kinetic energy of the molecules is the definition for temperature. What change in the average kinetic energy means? What change in the temperature do you see? nothing you will say there will be no change then which contains more heat energy one gram of ice at zero degrees or one gram of water at zero degrees here one gram of water has more heat energy because it has to reject 336 joules of heat energy in order to become one gram of ice at zero degrees Okay, so because it has the energy, it will reject the energy. So it has more heat energy. So let us see how we write this A and C. This I already explained to you. You will say there is no change. 
So we write the answer when the lake starts freezing each kg of water at 0 degree C it liberates 336000 joules that is latent heat of fusion that heat energy to the surrounding to become 1 kg of ice at 0 degree C. This liberated heat makes the surrounding pleasant. Then the C part which one has more heat? 1 gram of water at 0 degree C has more heat than 1 gram of ice at 0 degree C. Why? Because, put a comma here, as 1 gram of water at 0 degree C has to liberate means give out or reject 336 joule heat energy to become ice. How much of ice? 1 gram of ice at what temperature? 0 degree C. And this means that this water has 336 joules of heat energy more than 1 gram of ice at 0 degree C. Now we come to question 9b. Given below is the circuit to study the magnetic effect of the electric current. ABCD is the cardboard kept perpendicular to the conductor XY. So we have ABCD like this. XY is the conductor and this is perpendicular. A magnetic compass is placed at point P of the cardboard. So we have this over here is the cardboard and P1 and P2 are the positions of the magnetic compass before and after passing the current through XY respectively. So when this compass needle is there, when there is no current passing, it is showing this which means which means magnetic compass needle is pointing north as it is here. That means no current is flowing. And the moment the current is flowing, it becomes like this. So first the magnetic compass needle is like this and then the same thing becomes like this. That means it has rotated like this. Correct? Now some of you will say we don't understand. Look, if this is the first position, in order to become like this position, it will have to become like this, then 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 like this. So look at the path taken by this tip of the needle. Isn't it going this way? Now doesn't that mean that it has gone clockwise? Yes. So the current over here has been in such a way as to produce clockwise magnetic field this way all right now remember the magnetic field around the conductor carrying current is given by the right hand thumb rule if it is thumbs up that is when your thumb is up it is anti-clockwise direction and when it is thumb pointing downward of your right hand then it becomes clockwise direction what direction is this this is clockwise. That means the current must be this way. Now if it is this way, we will show it in the diagram this way. So it is going from x to y. Which rule did we use? We used the right hand thumb rule. State the direction of the current in the conductor. Is it from x to y or y to x? It is, it is downwards means x to y. The third subpart, if resistance R is increased, then what will be the effect on magnetic field lines around the conductor? Now, if this resistance is increased, the current will decrease. Now, if the current decreases, why would it decrease? And that is because the current depends upon the resistance how is it related to it? Resistance and current, they are inversely proportional. Less resistance, more current. More resistance, less current. Now, if the current is less, how is magnetic field dependent on the current? Magnetic field is directly proportional to the current, which means the magnetic field will become less, it will become weaker. So the magnetic field lines,
will become less dense underline less dense so we write magnetic field lines will become less dense as the magnetic field becomes weaker due to less current in the circuit why the current was less because the resistance was more so this was the last question remember in your section b you had to attempt four questions out of six questions so by now i hope you have understood how you had to write the answers write in the comment box whether you have been able to do justice to the questions how many marks are you expecting and if there is still any doubt regarding any solution and i will see if i can answer that in the meantime take care god bless thank you for watching and all the best for the remaining papers bye